Welcome to workshop number 10, which isn't actually a workshop, it's an exhibition where you guys are the stars of the show and I'm just going to be the MC. I get to introduce the people who have put photos in. Pleased to say we've had 21 people enter images, which is really cool. What I'll do for the exhibition is I'll show a picture of the local guide and it'll have their name and their connect tag there as well and the feedback that they gave from the actual workshops. Everybody's wondering, did I say something nice? <laughs> um, then if the, I would like the person to discuss their picture when I show it. If they don't want to, they don't have to, and I'll talk about it. For each one, I've added three words that I, I think are a, um, a perception of the image for me. And then after, after that person's introduced their image, the other people can talk to them about it and ask them questions if they'd like to about where it is or how they took it or what they like about it. And they're all really cool. And then at the, the end of it, we'll just go into social time and um, till we hit the, the two hour mark. So Rosie, would you like to repeat or maybe Shreya if you want to do it, <laughs> what you guys were talking about before we were recording? Um. I guess I should ask Falguni. She has the surprise package from us. So this is a kind of a thank you which we want to say to you uh, because you are being such a good mentor and teaching us so much things. So we want to we'll show our gratitude. We will do it afterwards. We will do it afterwards. Let's give it a surprise for now. Let everyone join yeah. in first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We can do it at the end. So first up, Part of the questions that people were answering when they put their responses in about submitting a photo was which workshops did you attend? And really good turnout from so many people who attended right across the weeks. And that certainly matches my perception of the people who were coming along. So it's, it's been really cool. Um, from a, attendees, I'd like to say a, a special thank you to Ananda, who's a endless source of wisdom. Yeah, thanks. And uh, yeah, the, um, the best of uh, fun uh, that, that I've had for a while. Uh, yeah, and meeting all these new people. Yeah, cool. Not only is he a font of wisdom, but when you put him on the spot and he has to talk, he somehow manages to put some words together. <laughs> <laughs> this was a good one too. The people were asked, do you think photography has improved since you took the series? 100% yes. That could be just people sucking up. I hope they really mean it. <laughs> no, they're sucking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll never know, will we? <laughs> and now into the, the last bit before we get into the exhibition part. So each of you was asked to make some kind of statement about the workshops and the statements varied from a couple of words to a book. <laughs> so I'm amazed how much data you can get in one of those fields actually, <laughs> given its short answer. Uh, so I put it together into a word cloud and I'll see the, the words that we came up with are really quite interesting. There's a, a lot of learning, understanding, things about being different, light, techniques, photography of course, lenses, tips, composition, but it was really cool. So I quite like the way word clouds work if you haven't met them before. The, the words that are mentioned the most tend to be the biggest ones and they're often the brightest colors as well. So I've got up to 26 people now. And now it's time for the exhibition. So just a quick word up front that the images in the exhibition are copyright to the author or creator of the image and their name is called out on each of the slides. So I just want to avoid any confusion on the part of YouTube. Thank you for the copyright strike last week on the video. I don't know if anybody noticed, but number nine went up and about 10 minutes later, number nine went down because YouTube killed it. Yay. Thank you, YouTube. So. The images are shown in the order they're submitted. So it's not any particular order that I've picked. It's just as people put them in. And I'll introduce the local guide and they'll get um, a couple of minutes to talk about their image. If you take longer than two, don't stress about it. And then we can have a couple of minutes of questions. 
and if they're not here I'll speak for them for the image yeah okay our first one's not here and that's Anya so Anya's away hiking in the bush looking for country mural street art and I've, I've seen a couple that she's found so I won't spoil the surprise but she's found some really cool things that she's going to put into a connect post when she comes back and she's hiking with her family so the main thing that um, Anya picked from the workshops was the painting with light so she's quite keen to try that and she might be doing some while she's away with her family her family's a bit like mine they just have to put up with the guy doing photographs and this was Anya's image and the three things that come to mind when I look at this image is it's in layers so there's lots of things one after the other to look at we've got leading lines and we've got a mystery it's behind a cage so you, it's pretty hard to tell what the the things in there actually are but they look really interesting you want to go there and have a look don't you mm. there's and also framing Paul yeah Ollie said that as well mm. so we'll just have a quick look at the chat people can unmute and, and talk about the image if they want to so in the chat we've had uh, awesome stunning nice uh, Welcome, Vela. Uh, great composition and awesome. So we'll move on to the next person. I think you actually saw who that was. Now, let me just go back to the people list and see if they're here, hopefully. So Jason, it's your turn to shine and you are here. So Jason's main thing, take away from the workshops was about the composition of images. So we're ready to look at his image and you're ready to chat, Jason? <laughs> nice. Jason, would you like to talk about your image? You're muted at the moment. Hi, Paul. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. So, um, like, uh, just before I talk about the image, I uh, just wanted to thank you for uh, having this uh, series of sessions. It's been a very wonderful um, weekend uh, for the last... Uh, nine weeks and um, we'll be missing this hopefully you should have a uh, few more uh, similar kind of sessions for everyone uh, so i hope everyone will agree on that as well thank you, <laughs> thank you very much so thanks to max for entertaining us and uh, having <laughs> the sessions uh, fun and informative thank you yeah cool thank you very much um there might be some other sessions in the future but i'm definitely going to take a break because the family's been putting up with being quiet for a couple of hours every sunday night for 10 weeks <laughs> they've had enough too <laughs> <laughs> yeah i understand <laughs> would you yeah, like to so tell us about your image i recognize yeah, so that is a uh, disney cars car yeah this was my son's uh, toy uh, it was very old in fact if you zoom and see there <laughs> many of the stickers would have worn out actually so uh, this one i just took it uh, uh, pitch dark condition actually uh, full lights off um, long exposure and i used a um, um, torch light to just uh, um, wave around this car so that it will become brighter only on those areas and um, it was a long exposure shot in fact so there's no light at all only that uh, spotlight through the um, uh, torch light is what uh, i've used for uh, taking this picture yeah that's a really cool way to do it and just highlighting just the thing that you want to see and a little bit of light during a long exposure does have a nice effect doesn't it yeah yeah exactly yeah. So this, well, this one I played, um, um, and since it is lockdown, you know, we are not uh, allowed to go anywhere. So, so <laughs> we're just trying to experiment at home uh, with certain things. So this is one of them, uh, which I have done. Yeah, you you might recall me saying that Melbourne's not in lockdown anymore. Well, we've had a difference now. Um, about a third of Melbourne's in back into the stage four lockdown now, and. Some areas of Melbourne are actually locked in their houses. They are actually not allowed, to leave, not allowed to leave at all. Things are being brought to them. That's in the Housing Commission flats in Flemington. Yeah, hopefully you're also the things will improve. Hopefully. So the three things that I thought of when I looked at this image were light, 
and I, I really like the play on light there. Um, the depth is really cool because when you're taking photos of small things, anybody that's tried that knows that getting a good depth to the image is actually really hard. So well done there. And the colors are really bright and cheerful and nice. So it's really yeah. cool. Thanks, Jason. Just uh, one more tip uh, since you just mentioned. So, um, so as I mentioned, this was a um, pitch dark condition I've taken. But what I did was when the lights were on, I fixed the focus and uh, kept it in that manual focus and then switched off all the lights and did this light uh, painting. So that way yeah. the focus is intact, uh, even though there is no uh, light at that time. And um, focusing in the dark is very difficult. As <laughs> anybody who's tried to do it knows that. Even the cameras that shoot out those really annoying beams of light to try and focus, even those ones are difficult. Cool, has anybody got any questions for Jason? I've got a question. I love the light on that picture. It's excellent, the color. The composition is interesting. Um, I was wondering if some, probably Paul, maybe Ananda could explain the composition of that. It's not obviously from the front, it's not from the side. It's somehow playing with thirds. Yeah, I can't quite explain it, but it works. It's something to do with the corner coming towards you or something. Yeah, I think it, it's got some perspective to it. So most of the car is yeah. on the bottom row of the third and it's starting to protrude into the, the centre. But I think most importantly, because it's something that we would perceive could move because it's a car, it's got somewhere to go. And mm. I think that's why okay. it looks good. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's actually a typical angle to photo cars. Because I, I used to photo uh, for some car yards sometimes. So it's just like that angle. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, in fact, if the front wheel can be uh, changed a little bit uh, towards the camera, it will look even more uh, better. But this is all fixed wheels, so that that was my actually <laughs> uh, the um, the in the mind I had that kind of a picture actually. Yeah, it's really cool. I've just noticed Roberto's real this week. He's not a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's move on thank to you. the next person. And thank you for submitting, Jason. Shreya. So, Shreya said, the best thing can't actually describe one best thing. I learned a lot about photography, being an amateur. Photography for maps was such an important aspect when it comes to contribution towards maps. Talking to special guests and every week's task kept us motivated to try new things and exploring different perspectives. Yeah, that's really cool because that, that's where the workshops were aimed. They were aimed to be interesting and to get you to try and do things that you hadn't done before. You're on mute at the moment, Shreya, within the limitations uh, of what we've got. So, are, yeah. we ready to, are we ready to see your image? Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I do like where this one is, a selfie on top of a mountain. That's cool. Yeah. So, this is Shreya's image. The um, first three things I thought about this image were, it looks yummy. You want to eat that, don't you? Yeah, ice cream is always a special place in my heart. <laughs> and the light's really, really nice. It's nice and warm and, and friendly and welcoming. And there's great depth because you're showing the product. And my monitor's over here if you wonder why I keep looking over there. But um, you're showing the product and you're showing the vibe of the store but you're not showing any detail. So there's nothing distracting from the product. It's really cool. Yeah, actually, it was the, the Naturals uh, ice cream shop was just open nearby my classes. So it was like a good opportunity to click the photos and put on the maps. So the main thing to show about ice cream was this way. So I photoed this and uploaded to the maps. Yeah, it's really cool. So you've highlighted a local business as well as doing one of your tasks. Yes. <laughs> That's really good. That's kind of what we do as local guides. Has anybody got any questions for Shreya? What flavor is it? Oh, that, uh, that is, I guess, anjeer. Like the oh. dried apricot one. Wow. <laughs> Naturals always have the best fruit flavors. So instead of going to the uh, typical chocolates and vanilla, so I went for the fruit flavor. Good choice, Ooh. good choice. Yep. Thank you. Definitely a good choice. It looks like a nice shop too. Nicely set up. 
Cool. Oh, well, shall we find out who the next person is? Yeah. It's Crazy oh, Ollie. <laughs> and I have to say, as selfies go, mate, this one's a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And Ollie said that Paul's passion for photography really inspired me. So I'm, I'm glad that you, you feel that way. That's really cool. So maybe we should look at your image. What do you think? Yes. Yes, of course. Because I, I uh... lovely. Yeah. So when I looked at this one, I instantly saw the beauty of the place. It's exactly what comes across in your mind. So it's a really lovely capture of some coastline. New Zealand's got some particularly rugged coastline, so I'm thinking it might be some New Zealand. Yes. The the light is awesome, and because the light's awesome. It gives you depth, it gives you contrasting areas that are interesting to look at, and it gives you some really rich colours. And my personal favourite, dead level. That horizon's spot on. Um, yes. I, I think we talked about it during the workshops, that if the horizon's not level, it, it, it can distract you. So you yeah. see this not level horizon and it, it starts to annoy you a little bit and you stop looking at the picture for what it is, which is a picture of a really beautiful place. So would you like to talk about it, Ollie? Yes, this is a um, um, me and my son. We um, we did some hiking, and there was on the top of the hill, and obviously the Tasman Sea, Tasman Sea, and there uh, got a little bit of foreground and uh, a background, and there um, one third, you know, the uh, the horizon is on one third. Sort of um, try to also get the the waves, the white waves in in middle. Um, the point of interest is that a uh, um, little piece of um, land in the middle, so uh, you just your eyes just can kind of wandering around and see and uh, yeah, you, uh, you, yes, that bit yeah and uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's, a, it's a, um, um, I, I normally I mean uh, um, it's not great timing for uh, for landscape. It's just uh, like uh, ten o'clock. But uh, but I read the color is really stunning. So uh, mm. yeah, I, I, I'll give it a go. Normally, you know, you do this sort of photo in the in the, in the twilight or you know a golden hour sort of a yeah setting. But yeah. but but yeah, I just I really like the color. So uh, generally in the early morning or in, yeah. and into the late afternoon before you yeah. get into that harsh light is it, still okay. Um, yeah. At this at this time of year in the southern hemisphere, it almost doesn't matter if you do it at one o'clock in the afternoon. Because mm. we, we get such a, a lovely low sun at the moment. Yeah. But that's uh, really cool, Ollie. Really Thank nice. You. Uh, you. I don't know if you can see the chat, but we're getting... Yeah. We're in, in the chat, we're seeing um, beautiful, real beauty, oh my goodness, amazing, so heavenly, really nice. Colours with heart faces. Blue <laughs> from Shreya. Uh, <laughs> it's gorgeous, beautiful. The only types of blues I want right now from Ria, and picturesque and refreshing, and all kinds of blue, perfect. So that's cool. Oh, well, Thank I, you. I think you can probably guess who the next person is. Have I mentioned that bin yet? Of course you can. There's, it, it, it seems to be a natural vignette because of the shade in the foreground, which I think really works. It works really well. Um, it. It really sets the picture off. It, it pulls the eye into the waves and that headland. Uh, it's fantastic. I love that picture. It's Thank you. Thank you, Stu. And a second thing, a second thing is that the land in the background is also perfectly flat. Yeah. And it, it's also, because you've, you've crouched down or maybe stood on your tiptoes or something, it becomes a continuation of the horizon. Yeah. It, it's not broken up at all which I think is great. It's and difficult the, to do, isn't it? Yeah. And Paul, I think the color it's looks different on my computer for some reason. Uh, the colors will look different on everyone's computer. <laughs> so one, of, one of the really annoying things about digital photography is every monitor and every printer is different. And yeah. I do chat with people sometimes who will spend hours perfecting the colors of an image and then they put it on the web where not only is it rendered in 256 colors, 
every person's looking at it on a different monitor. And yeah. some people are people like me who have got color, cali color calibrated monitors that can show 99.9% .9 of the sRGB gamut, and most people don't. <laughs> yeah, good point, good point. Hi, Paul, I have a question on this photo. Sure. Uh, I do not see light in the far hill. You, you can see some light in the close hill here but the far hill i do not see any light ollie might, it's in the dark. yeah holly might like to talk about that but i'd suggest that one of two things is going on there it's either under a cloud or alternately that hill in the front is actually taller than it looks and it is shading the hill in the back uh you mean the front uh, this uh yeah the so i think this he's, talk, he's talking about the dark area oh, yeah. here i think i think i think it's a cloud it's a yeah. it's a it's a it's some cloud uh, hiding the year uh, it's like look at look at the look at the right side is also a dark area it's just a piece of patch of cloud that uh, covers the uh, the light it's one of the cool things about the sea is that absolutely nowhere is it the same color twice yeah but you definitely got to go to new zealand um, we are hoping that uh, australia and new zealand form that tunnel <laughs> <For COVID>. <laughs> <laughs> so that we can come and visit you yes and yeah, we can come and infect you <laughs> <laughs> cool all right then. thank you on to our next person who you probably already know because you probably saw it when i slipped up and now i'm on the wrong slide deck feliciana so Hi. i i met you at connect last year I think which was pretty cool and what you said about the sessions was that all of them related to photography techniques thanks to Paul I could refresh my brain again about the photography techniques language method that I've learnt before during my college but this time is definitely more interactive and wider so I'm, I'm glad about that because it, it's this is so like school and it's so easy to go into that mode but it's meant to be fun and interesting so that to me says that you you did actually find it fun and interesting. So who wants to see the image? I do. It's a few smiles, a few waves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's give it a crack. <laughs> so I like this one when it came in. I hadn't had lunch yet when I first saw this. I was already hungry, but this made me hungrier because that looks like a really nice dish. It's got really nice natural colouring in it and you're picking up the flavour. I know that sounds a bit weird, but you can tell that that's a flavourful dish. Mm. So, would you like to talk about your image? One thing so, I'd like you to talk about is um, how you managed to keep the areas around it black, because that's cool. Actually, the black background is my kitchen. <laughs> it's full of black colours. And talking about the picture, it's if you see the beef, the beef, it's actually a rendang. Have you ever heard about beef rendang? Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah, last month my mom cooked beef rendang to our family, and we always eat beef rendang with white rice. But you know, one of the famous Indonesian instant noodle, Indomie, is very famous worldwide. I think. Uh, so I had an idea. How about we eat the beef rendang, not with white rice anymore. How about we eat that with the Indomie with beef rendang flavor. So that for the one dinner, I, I made the instant noodle by myself. And then I put the beef rendang with, along with, with the Indomie with beef rendang flavor. And here it is, the result. Spicy and the thick, thick sauce. Oh, combined really well with the noodles. Yeah, I, I think it looks really impressive. I, part of my exposure to curry, apart from the fact that we eat it here as a family, is uh, early on with Ananda in our photo walks, we'd start getting around food time and Ananda going, hey, let's go to this Indonesian place and eat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He always eats these deep fried whole fish. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's really cool. I really like that. That it just looks spicy. It looks you can see the chili in the oil. I like the way that <laughs> looks. I reckon that would be great. Has anybody got any questions for Feliciana? See, Vikram says he's hungry. And you're you're being uh, 
from Chananat being complimented on your combination of Indomi and Rendang. Thank you. And uh, Yulia likes the colours and the detail. Oh, I'd also like to add something, Paul. Um, yeah, sure. Here, I also added it with Snapseed to make cool. the background look more blur or bokeh. And also to make the noodle and the, I mean the plate with the noodle and the beef rendang more contrast and sharper. So I use Snapseed. Excellent. Hey, just while we're there, who saw that um, two new things got released by Adobe during the week or, or late last week, one or the other? Um, Photoshop Camera is now out, which has got some really interesting functions worth having a play with. Some of my Instagrams have been edited with that thing and it can do some bizarre stuff. Uh, the uh, other one is Photoshop Express is now available online. So it's the little brother of the big tool, but it's free. You don't have to sign up for anything, which is cool. So moving on to the next person, which is Rosie. And Rosie talked about food photography and how she likes to take good pictures with different modes. And Rosie, I have to say that um, I've seen your photography improve so much during the last 10 weeks. You've really changed what you're paying attention to in the, in the images and it's really cool and outcome. So let's have a look at your picture. So this one's another food dish. It also looks like it's got some nice spice to it, but that sauce in the foreground looks like it's nice and calming, even though it's got lots of colours that suggest heat. But most of all the words that come to me is appetising. I really want to eat that. Um, I like to focus on this because the, it's predominantly on the source. And anybody that's tried to take a picture with a good sharp focus on something that's really soft, like I'm guessing this is probably a yogurt sauce, um, that's really hard to do trying to find a focus point of something like sauce. And the different textures that you've got through the foods here in this image are really interesting and really cool. So would you like to talk about your image, Rosie? Yeah, uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, this is all because of you. Uh, your techniques and all had helped me. I had made a batura uh, and chickpeas. We call it chole and dahi bala. And on top of a curd, I had put red chili powder, uh, cumin powder roasted, and green chutney and jaggery chutney. So all that colors you can see. <laughs> and in that uh, middle of batura is onions, salad. Uh, I've added salt and red chili. And that is Punjabi chole. So this color, while eating, I got very attracted. And we were supposed to take it. Suddenly, I remembered about you to take photos. <laughs> so I clicked photo. My son was telling, Mama, I'm hungry. I told, wait, wait, let me take photos. <laughs> I <have to> put... <laughs> because uh, I'm not used to take click photos. Na? So, but after attending your sessions, na, now whatever I cook, I first take photos, put on Instagram and all. <laughs> after having my lunch or dinner. So this was amazing. Many people liked it. And uh, they, my son also told he appreciated me. Now you have learned. So uh, he told how you uh, did it. I said all the techniques I've learned from Paul. So he was also very happy to see me clicking because I had tagged him also in my photo. Thank you. And today is, really cool. is Guru Purnima. Again, I would say, I would like to thank <laughs> you and everyone, Max. And being a teacher, uh, we were taught your lesson should be a fun way. Uh, not only teaching, but some fun way. And while you were teaching, Max used to do some fun and all. So <laughs> it made it more interesting, more interesting. And we didn't knew how the time one, one and a half hour goes away. So this is called a best teacher. Thank you all. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. The time does just vanish when you're enjoying it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think the uh, best thing I've seen in the chat so far is uh, from Vikram. He says, I have to go to the kitchen. I cannot resist myself. So we've made him really hungry. <laughs> Very soon, I will be uh, coming live to teach this ch uh, chole, Punjabi chole. I will tag you because many of them have asked recipe. And I'm a very foodie person. And I don't know, people say I cook very nice. 
my mom was a chef uh, she had participated in master chef so uh, but she didn't go ahead she just wanted to meet great chefs of india so uh, and next to her i beat her people say i beat my mom <laughs> <laughs> so many of them are asking for the recipe very soon i'll be teaching live <laughs> how to make this <laughs> thank you i'm seriously impressed that your mom was on master chef that's cool <laughs> That's a really good thing. Oh, well, thank you, Rosie. So well, let's go and find out who our next one is. It'd help if I use the right screen. So we've got Yulia, who I'm pretty sure is here. Is it Yulia or Julia? Yulia. Yulia. I was right the first time. Okay. So, and you said that you your takeaways were the drawing with light. And I may have learnt more if I joined all the sessions, but that's okay because they are up on YouTube. And you're welcome to, to watch those. You're welcome to share those with other people if you want to, too, because uh, that's what they're there for. So are we ready to see your image, Julia? Yeah. I actually like this um, portrait, too, by the way. It's really cool. It's a, that's a self-portrait. Self self no, it's, yeah, it's really cool. It sort of looks like you're looking wistfully into the distance, trying to figure something out. So I quite like that. There's an art to self-portraits. Um, look up on Instagram, self-portrait Sunday, I think it is. And the art of self-portraiture, I think, is the other hashtag they use. It's a group that's been going for a long time. It started on G Plus in 2011, and they're still going now on Insta. So the three things I thought of when I looked at this image, nature, action, because catching a bird in flight, always a bit of a challenge and the detail of that image. And I also like the way it's sort of fitting into the, the rules of thirds. And you've, you've given the bird somewhere to land, which is cool. Makes it look comfortable. So would you like to talk about the image, Julia? Yeah, I shared it because it's the most difficult image, that the photo that I have ever taken. Because in fact, I was doing macro shooting of a spider using manual focusing and my big small compact camera and then I accidentally turned and saw some big uh, <clears throat> bird and so I just had almost had no time to change the settings I did my best and as it was on the other side of the river I also had to use the zoom so it might maybe the maximum or over the maximum zoom it's more than 10 times so it was very difficult to focus and to <laughs> keep stable so, and yeah. I even didn't uh, I even didn't see what type of bird it was until I take this shot and then I <laughs> looked at it on my camera and then I see that it is a stock do you know a lot of the best shots come from chance things that you just happen to see when you're taking shots of something else and being able to respond to that and change the settings of your camera on the fly and get that shot, very, very difficult. So well done. Yeah, that was a real challenge. <laughs> Shreya was asking which camera you were using. Uh, it is uh, Lumix TZ100. It's a compact camera, but it has a really big zoom. It's 15 time zoom and there is an option of manual focusing though it's not very comfortable but still it provides some additional possibilities yep. and that's one of the panasonic cameras the lumix they make some really nice equipment yeah yeah and it is small and you can take it in all your travels that's why and it has quite good like, characteristics as for lenses that's why i chose it yeah, cool. Yeah, it's really handy to, in your travels to have a a good range of zoom lens and if you can carry other ones, a few others as well. It's always really cool. Uh, we've got a few people saying cool and perfect and clapping from Iwadi and amazing from Devatch. And who was also impressed that you could take a picture so fast with the clarity and the right details, so... Well done. Thanks. Cool. Has anybody got any questions for Yulia about the image? 
Did we mention what type of bird it was? Yes, I think it was a stork. a stork. A stork. Stork. A yes. stork, yeah. It looks like a stork, yeah. Yep. A white stork. It's delivering that baby that you don't know about, Stuart. <laughs> 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 the, 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 the one, the one interesting thing about meetups like this, when you're, you've got communication going around the whole world, I mean, Stuart and Ananda and probably Roberto are certainly old enough to remember when global communication was actually really hard. You had to book the call in advance to get it done. But um, now we've got this wonderful video that's going around the world, but you still see that one thing that plagues comms, and that's delay. So if someone says something, and you, you see the laughs sort of propagate through the people as they hear it. <laughs> It's quite funny to watch. Oh, well, any other questions for Yulia? No? Well, we'll move on to the next person, who is Raju. So I'll just let Madhan in. Um, Raju says a camera without a lens is useless to a photographer. We might talk about that at the end of uh, this Raju's image. A lens is a tool used to bring the light to a fixed focal point. I learn about lens professional and consumer and learn about basic times of lens, zoom, wide, standard, prime, macro, and telephoto. Interestingly enough, you can actually use a camera without a lens at all, but it's kind of cheating because you're sort of making one by using a little tiny hole. And it's, yeah. called a pinhole. it's called a pinhole camera. Yeah. Are we ready to see your image, Roger? Yeah. <laughs> Cool. All right, then. Here we go. So Raju's image is of a duck on a pond. And I, I really like the calmness of this. Um, the duck sitting in the circles. We didn't talk about using circles in image composition because it's sort of an advanced thing. But as you can see here, circles can be really, really cool to focus your attention on something. And the ripples in the pond, while they're coming out from the duck, to me, they actually draw your line, line of sight. They draw your eye into the duck, so you're looking at the, the animal. So do you want to talk about your image, Raju? Yes, yeah, so this is my photo during I visit uh, on Jannagar board since we, uh, and this photo click on my uh, DSLR uh, Canon uh, 15D and 250mm uh, lens. And I edit on this photo on Google Photos for lighting and depth depth of uh, water. So now this is clearly two wave. Yeah, it's really cool. Okay. Yeah, so it, that camera I think is a 1.3 crop factor if I remember right. So two 200 millimeter lens is probably about 300 ish. Yeah. So that's um pretty cool. And you've captured some interesting detail in the water itself too, because little bits and pieces floating in the water I think are quite cool. They just add to it. Has anyone got any questions for Raju? Hi. Sure, go. Yeah, I actually I don't have a question, but I have a saying seeing this picture. Like actually you can tell that duck looks very cool on the surface. Uh, mm. But uh, a lot of peddling is being done for it to maintain the coolness. Yes. <laughs> it looks yes. cool from above, but from below, a lot of peddling is being done. Yeah, it's a bit like me in a meeting when they've asked me a question, I don't really know the answer. Under the table, <laughs> I'm trying to run away. Devanch <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. um, says not to request, the, not to forget the reflection of the duck in the water. That's true. Mm. Um, Jason says lighting is cool. Awaiti says our boyfriend and clapping. And <laughs> I can't quite tell what that emoji is, but it might involve kissing. Um, <laughs> and Rhea says that it's uh, speaking volumes in terms of serenity. And Yulia, minimalistic and serene. And you could use it for relaxation, certainly could. Stuart loved it. Uh, Nita says it looks tranquil and Raji's, Raju's, uh, sorry, Rosie says it's amazing. Uh, Shreya, composition is too good. And Chananat, pretty. And Jessica, who's the last one because the rest have scrolled away, it looks professional. 
and we've got some wows, and now we've got a weighty laughing as well. <laughs> um, Yuli has asked, did you think of any other framing for the shot? That, that's an Ananda type question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Yuli was asking, in your composition, did you think of any other framing when you were creating the photo, Raju? Thank you. I... No, that's cool. Okay, we'll move on to the next person. And that is... Falguni. Yay. Falguni wrote a book. <laughs> So I, oh, I, what? I have written a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot from each week. Most important was food photography. Actually, I think you taught us some stuff about food photography that week, if I remember rightly. Um, Google Photos and how to take better pictures for maps. I learned about different concepts, which Paul made very easy to understand. The demo and images help to understand and the tasks help us to learn. I was happy I could participate in all nine weeks. It's true, you have been here every week and gain tips. The food photography tips reflect in my recent posts too. The guest speakers shared their tips to take pictures, which was a great thing. I learnt about murals, accessible photos, 360 photos, and how to keep them stable and make perfect sphere. Drawing blue lines, which you weren't aware of earlier. Food tips were the best as I usually review restaurant and take food pictures, which is pretty cool. So. Let's move on to your image. It's another good selfie, by the way, because you're staring straight into the camera. You're challenging the people that are looking at you. I mean, what are you looking at? Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> so That was the only good image I had. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. So, I'm really bad at taking selfies. <laughs> yeah, I think we all are. I just give up and do it. <laughs> yeah. but, this one, the, the, the three things that come to mind immediate when I look at it are the really bright, attractive colours. The use of the light, which is really cool. You've lit this really nicely. And the juxtaposition of the chocolate ice cream onto that yellow background. And I hope you didn't leave these too long and let them melt. Um, there's one other thing that, that I'd point out, and that's the, the watermark where you can see um, Falguni's name down here. I have to highlight it because it's hard to see. Um, that's the kind of watermark that's cool. So some people put watermarks straight across the middle of their image, and I always think they kind of suck. So if you if you must use a watermark, if you're trying to keep your name out there or protect your image, <clears throat> watermarks are one way to do that. And tasteful ones that don't detract from the image like this, they're the best way to do it. So would you like to talk about your image, Falguni? It's another nice, yummy looking one. Uh, yes, surely. Um, for everyone who thinks it's an ice cream, no, it's not an ice cream. It's a cake. <laughs> it's called <laughs> cake pickle. It's called cake pickle. Uh, there is a cake which I've shaped in, into an ice cream and coated with chocolate. I have drizzled the chocolate and uh, placed the tiny balls on it to make it more colorful. I chose a yellow background because uh, in the dark background, the brown one was giving a bad look and it was looking very dull. And since I clicked it at night, I had to use external light. So I used your tip of uh, using the tissue. Uh, you can see a little bit of reflection of uh, light on the right side of the image. But it worked well and the food was captured better. And the yellow color is enhancing the cake cycle. So I'm happy with the image overall. Yeah, really cool. So th there's a few um, good tips that you've brought up there. And I think we talked about using the tissue a couple of times during the series to, to um, soften the light that you were using a little bit. Yeah, it's really I remember cool. it from the very first day because that was the first question I had asked you in the uh, workshop number <laughs> one. And yep. since then, I'm using it uh, often because I'm not able to go out and uh, taking photos in the light at home is really difficult because we get reflection on food sometimes on the plate. I don't like it. So I move to a better corner and do it. So the next thing to try is to find something reflective and still shine the light through a tissue, but reflect it off a reflective surface like some aluminium foil or something like that and see what that does. You'll have fun. Yeah, I'll surely do that. Thank and you so much. 
and the other cool thing that you you talked about there was you changed the background so you used one background you didn't like the way it was so you changed it to make it look better and that's really cool that that's the sign of someone who actually cares about their images which is great uh, i actually try different backgrounds because uh, when we have dark color food like chocolate or something we are capturing and that time i've noticed that uh, if we have a dark background the images don't come out well and if we have bright colors on the dark background they come out well so i took a bright one in the background so the dark ones enhances yeah and that's that's called contrast um and you can use a a totally contrasting color like the brown to the yellow Uh, the other way to do it is to go with um grays and things like that which can help as well but the the bright color to a dark color that's a a great way to highlight things and accentuate the food it's really cool thank you for it all right we shall move on to the next person if it works hey iwade The way they promised she's going to do something else too so she's got to turn her camera on now. So her feedback was that that even I can give back to my community without expecting something in return that I can devote my time into ensuring that other people get better at something that I do really know which is cool. Now I know Wado is here but I can't see you at the moment. Oh, there she is. There you are. <laughs> so, what else were you going to do about it when I was teasing you on Instagram? <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair enough. <laughs> okay. And here's Elaide's image, which I'm guessing is probably from your balcony. Um the three things that came to mind when I looked at this were secrets leading and levels. I've got that lovely level horizon, which I remember I think the first time you made this image it was quite crooked, so I see you've changed that, which is cool. Um and the reason I'm saying secrets is don't you just want to know what's going on in this garden down here? You can almost <laughs> see it. So you you, you want to see it. <laughs> which is really cool. <laughs> so do you want to talk to us about your image? No. <laughs> Ewade you have to speak you have to speak you can't be silent when you yeah. are here you have to talk talk and talk uh, and I, no- I noticed that uh, I noticed Falguni and Tri are your mentors so <laughs> I'll get you to talk <laughs> Ewade you, you better talk huh you always yeah. making people talk so talk we listen oh god <laughs> yes yes everyone wants to do talk Um thank you very much. Actually, I don't have anything to say. I just want to say a very big thank you to Paul. Um I'm really going to miss this um session. I want to say thank you to Falcone because every week I don't know, I usually forget to submit my um assignments. But this particular week I took this picture. You had just taught us about um taking photos of architecture. I always wondered why my um why my buildings were always slanted or looking like they're coming to swallow me up <laughs> until <laughs> until that class you know then um I think at that class he told us we had to stand at a T to the building so um I was trying my best to um experiment with it and I just saw this very beautiful cloud and I thought okay why not let me try this then um when i posted this and you liked it i was like oh the the more you liked i edited with snapseed i loved the colors i popped into it and all that so i like the image and i like every beautiful person i have met during the course of this session and That's i really hope cool. we'll have another session so because you told us that you are 35 years a photographer and you have been married for 30 years So photographer is the senior of the marriage. So please give my message to you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I think that might get Christine a little bit of a laugh when she watches that on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's cool that you you did it in Snapseed. 
and thank you for speaking. I appreciate that. That was really good. You do it really well, by the way, so don't don't worry about speaking or anything like that. You should always do it. The the editing here, and you've talked about making the colours pop a bit, but you've resisted that temptation that people often fall into where they make them pop too much and the images start to look like horrendous cartoons. So this one's really good. It's nice and natural and it's a, a really good feeling and it's it just a, a nice, simple image. This particular one I submitted, this is the original shot. The edited one is on my page on Instagram. Cool. So this is just the original photo. When you make the bright, colourful ones, that's what Instagram's for. <laughs> cool. All righty. We're into Muku. Now, this is another selfie that I like because you're standing in what looks like this absolutely ancient place, giving a nice plug to Bangladesh, Bangladesh local guides. Well done. And Mukul says that he learnt the important tips and trips on 360 photos. He also learnt about camera lenses and their importance in taking a good photo. So I checked the list. I think he's here. He is. Good. Let's go back to the chat. And are we ready to see your image, Mukul? Yeah, yes, I'm ready. Show my image. <laughs> and Awadi has made a few people laugh with the... Um, comparison in time frames there <laughs> so it's a, I, I don't think Max is actually here tonight but um, no, he's actually he's actually not here tonight but uh, I, I actually really like this because there's nothing wrong with with grabbing the screenshot for your image it's really cool um, you certainly captured a, a funny moment with Max because he does get into these things he, he's quite enjoys himself and you've captured some fun and you've done what is basically a really cool action portrait and taking a picture of someone when they're doing something it can be hard to get it right look how many politicians have these funny duck faces and things when they turn up in the media because they've been clicked at just the wrong moment or just the right moment if for the photographer's point of view and you want to make fun of politicians which is what I think they're doing so do you want to talk about your image oh, cool. Yes, definitely. Actually, uh, this is a, a 10 meetup series you are doing, Paul. It is a long time. If we compare this meetup series with test cricket, <laughs> I think <laughs> we are playing test cricket here. So in test cricket, I want to compare Max as an opener. He made all your meetup very nice. He, he helped you to open the meetup nicely. And we enjoyed his uh, activities during the starting of the meetup uh, every week. And uh, this photo is also mysterious to me because uh, no one can easily guess what he's, uh, he is doing. Is he a singer or uh, what he is doing? But, uh, and he is casting a 360 degree camera, but no one can easily guess what is this. Uh, someone will easily guess uh, it is a microphone but it is not microphone. It is a 360 camera. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Max is the batsman that would come out and take a huge swing and miss five times and then knock it right out of the field. <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> and uh, we enjoyed his performance very much. Yep. On the Bill other hand, I am not a uh, photographer at all. I, even I do not have a uh, DSLR camera. The photo I took, I used my uh, smartphone. So I, I did not take any stress to uh, submit a photo here of my own. I take this and uh, I also like uh, to share this photo with all of us. <laughs> well, the, the right right camera is the one that you've got in your hand. So it doesn't matter that it's a phone. It's a perfect thing to use. All right. Cool. All right. Max will be uh, very pleased to know that you love him. He's uh, probably off with his family tonight. So Max, Max was the opener of this test match, so he is missing the final uh, final round. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, he's missing final. Yeah, he's already in the bar having a beer. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, we'll move. Has anybody got any questions about Mukul's image? No. Okay. Yeah. We will. Yeah, Roger. Well, 
Yes, miss you, Max, bro. <laughs> I'll make sure he watches this. But uh, yeah, I was kind of hoping uh, he'd be able to come well, tonight, but I'm, I'm guessing he's off with his family. He well, you can tonight. try to contact Max uh, uh, at the bar now for live. <laughs> <laughs> Max, uh, uh, Max is not here, but surprise for you, Paul. Uh, really, that will be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll yes, send you the a I'll surprise s- on behalf of Max and few of us. I hope you'll like it. I'll, I'll send him a text message and we'll see if we can get him to come. So yes, I so think I my photo is uh, relevant. I'll, I'll do that now, see if we can get him in here. <laughs> Actually, I'll have to find the meet link first. So I'll um, we'll go on to the next picture, the next person, and then I'll um, find the meet link and text it to him because he will have forgotten. So the next person is Devanch. And what he was saying is stick to the basics. He wrote another book too, a bit like you, Fogoni. <laughs> uh, while the world is going crazy with filters, AR and many more artificial stuff, One thing is the most important, stick to the basics in photography. There are a couple of ground rules to every kind of photography category one might choose or follow. These would always help you to create a masterpiece with the standard setup. The workshop reminded me that all such basic rules, one should take care and then add their own flavor on top of it, definitely. Also, I got to know a lot, many perspective from our fellow local guide enthusiasts from around the world about their style and color. So, I think DaVinci is here. Yeah. Yep, great. So, we will go on to your image. Another good selfie, by the way. So, okay. selfies that are, actually tell a story are kind of cool. I like them. So, this image, the three words I came up with were reflection, for obvious reasons. I thought the next word would have been purple, but no, I went with calm and then the exposure because exposing bright things like this at nighttime is actually really hard to get it right. And you've done a great job here. You've still got a nice dark sky. You've got the dark water and you've exposed the buildings really nicely. So just while I'm trying to text Max, would you like to talk about your image? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, many of the Indian people would uh, know that this basically is a Presbyterian state in India. So it is in Delhi. So this was a rainy evening when we actually went to see that. And uh, I actually saw that there was some water on the ground. And when I, when I was actually leaning towards it, I saw that I could actually see there is a complete reflection of that place. And uh, I mean, it was a pretty hard to uh, get a picture or something like this because uh, I mean, it, it, my camera was almost dipping into water. So it was it was my phone with which I, with what I was actually taking that picture. So it was a bit risky for the phone. I mean, the half of the phone was already in water to take that picture as in full. So uh, that was an amazing experience to take something like that. Uh, I am not sure if everybody could uh, actually recognize this picture has been deliberately submitted upside down. So the sky is actually down, the water is up. That's pretty clever. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, I didn't actually notice that. So you see I, the clouds are at the bottom, but uh, it is all dark in, in the above. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really so cool. It is, it is so Look, symmetrical mm-hmm. that it, it, we are not able to find out if it is upside down or not. <laughs> Looking at it now, I can actually see that. You know what I might do with Max? So I, I really like this image. It's cool. It's a nice composition. Um, it's certainly a beautiful building and it's pretty well captured. And now you mentioned that it's upside down. Yeah, I can actually see cars that are in what would have been the right way up, but I can see them there. I didn't even notice them before. <laughs> well done. <laughs> nice trick work. Have you... Um, yeah. Has anybody got any questions for Devanch? I'm trying to call Max on Telegram, see if he answers. <laughs> this could be a slow moment in the video, couldn't it? 
Has anybody got any questions for Devench while we wait to see if Max answers? Yeah, did it need any cropping, Devench? Or were you happy with it just taken? Uh, no, actually, this is the full image that I have uh, taken. <laughs> mm -hmm. It looks kind of like a micro four thirds form factor. Small amount mm. of sharpening I have done for the picture. Yes, it is actually all the wrong. Well, he's not answering on Telegram. Let's see if I can get him on a real phone. I think I've got his phone number. I do. Aha. He's probably avoiding us. <laughs> he's looking at his phone now. He's getting in trouble with his wife because his friends are ringing him. Uh, did you uh, try to turn the camera upside down? Please leave a short message. No, uh, the camera was upright only. I actually turned the image upside down after that. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, sometimes when I find that the camera, usually a camera is um, uh, uh, thicker at the bottom, the the, the the top of the camera is, is quite short. Um, if I'm desperate enough, I turn the camera upside down so that the camera is lower to the ground than, than it normally is. Not an idea. But it's nice. It's really nice. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, it worked out quite nicely, didn't it? Mm. There's a way to use it. popped up on camera again. You look like a princess. <laughs> and now you have to talk. <laughs> All right then, so well done Devanch, and we'll move on to the next person. And we couldn't hear what you said already, you were muted. Our next person is Jesse or Jessica. I never have asked you which one you prefer, I think. Um, everyone calls me Jesse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's not the answer to the question though. <laughs> I prefer Jesse too. There you go. Okay, uh, what you said in the feedback was there's a lot to learn and the perfect shape shot takes a lot of practice, knowing the rules, but also trying a lot of different angles when you do it. And editing could make a really big difference too. I, I seem to remember on a photo walk in San Francisco, you were um, intrigued at something that I was looking at when I was looking at some different buildings and I was moving around and looking at them at different angles and you, you were quite fascinated with what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, remembering the museum of cable cars that you were taking photos of the i don't know motors or something in like really low speed i think yeah making them all blur yeah i do weird stuff <laughs> <laughs> just to see what will happen <laughs> okay we're ready to see your image yep and another cool selfie <laughs> thanks So when I looked at this one, the immediate things that came to mind were the, the composition and the colour and the depth and how they're all working together. So when I was looking at the image, we seem to have two Falgunis online now. When I was looking at the image, that beautiful bright red crimson colour just strikes you. And then you start to see the water droplets and then you start to see the leaves behind it giving the context of the rest of the plant. And it just comes off really nicely and it just all sort of fits and works together. So do you want to tell us about your creation? Sure. So that flower isn't supposed to come out at this time of the year, but I wanted to capture it because it, I found it interesting. I mean, it's the only flower in the whole plant or balcony and then it started raining and I remember seeing photos of flowers you know with uh, water and then I went there and I started um, trying different angles I first uh, tried to take a fill the fill frame shot and then from the top and then I remember the rule of thirst and so I remember a lot of rules that he taught us and I tried to apply them. I still wasn't completely happy with the photo like I told you because I thought 
thought that because the flower was facing, you know, the right way, I had to leave some room in the right, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I will. Yeah. Jesse and I talked about the image um, just a couple of days ago. And what Jesse's saying is that the, the flower is facing off to the right. So she was concerned that it looks like it hasn't got anywhere to go. And I think with static things like flowers, we don't expect them to be moving. So we don't expect them to have to have somewhere where they're going to go. Um, something like a person that's walking or a, a motorbike or something like that, you expect them to go somewhere. So we naturally give them a little bit of room just to, to keep it interesting. But I, I think with something static that doesn't move around very much like a flower, that's really cool. And you've got lots yeah. of commentary in the chat, so I don't know if you can see the chat tonight. Mm -hmm. Got uh, yeah. marvelous, love the drops, very beautiful, nice click. Water <laughs> drops give a different flavor. Water drops make it cool and more amazing. Water drops look great. Lots of people love the water drops. Um, <laughs> Yulia says the harmony of color, composition, and depth definitely. And Shreya says she's she's captured the same sort of image too, and there's a, a love it. Lots of people talking about the water drops. <laughs> they like the water drops. Yeah. You can use water drops with people too. Did you know that? So no. if you're if you're shooting um, a human and you want them to look a little bit different, you get them to rub themselves with oil and then you squirt them with water. It looks really cool. <laughs> so most yeah. of the time when you when you see someone in a photo on screen that looks really sweaty, like they've been doing exercise, they're not. They've just been rubbed in vegetable oil and sprayed with water. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I do want to say thank you for to you for organizing all this and I learned a lot because even though I have been you know interested in photography for a while I never really learned the basics I think I just grabbed the camera and did what I thought without really knowing what I was doing so I will practice a lot what you taught us and what everyone taught us and I appreciate what you did and all the special guests yeah cool thank you well we we've been lucky enough to go to connect so if we're even luckier and i reckon this is like winning test lotto or winning a lotto <laughs> but um if we're even luckier maybe next year we'll get to go again maybe we'll do a workshop instead of a photo walk that'll be great and we can all go and learn from each other that'd be fun mm. cool And the next person is Nita. So I think Nita's here. I think I saw her pop up in the list of people before. Jason says the droplets make the picture beautiful. Nita is here. So if you want to unmute. Nita said that she was most interested in composition and that I explained it well. I only touched on composition. We started the absolute basics of composition. It's such an enormous topic. We could talk about composition for years. <laughs> And it's also a really subjective topic. So something I like, someone else might not. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. And then, apart from that, the okay. leading lines, grid lines, and bokeh were also very informative. So, Nita, how are you? Oh, fine, fine. Thank you. Cool. Uh, but We're... you did talk about composition. Oh, I did, yes. Quite a lot. Right. You did. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, 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 I feel I scratched the surface of it, though. So it, it's certainly enough for our purposes because if I went into any more depth in it, people would go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready to see your image? Yeah. Cool. There, there's some awesome books on composition. Uh, look up Michael Freeman. He's quite good. Thank you. So this is Nita's image and the things that I thought about when I looked at this were exposure, depth, and light. Uh, the, the depth of field is quite cool because you're showing off all of these interesting lanterns and lights here. And I quite like the image because you've exposed for the bright lights properly. You've still managed to keep the background nicely exposed. And there's so much going on in this image that every time you look at it, you notice something else. And when I just turned and looked at it then, I noticed that there's a a security camera up in the top corner that I hadn't actually seen before uh, because there's so much thing so much happening in this image even though it's something that's not moving you can still see that there's just a lot of stuff going on so do you want to talk about your image yeah uh, since we are under lockdown we I couldn't take any pictures outside 
and uh, i was actually very busy going through a, through a project right now so you did give us the choice of taking any any old photographs this yep. one was taken in and uh, khanil khalili mark bazaar in cairo it's it's very very busy so uh, in fact if you look at the bottom left corner there's a man who actually jumped in at the last minute and <laughs> yes yes and uh, i tried taking three or four after that but it, it was too full of people yep and i this looked very exotic and the sort of lamps i just i loved it actually uh, I, i'm usually i take my photographs on a on my smartphone this particular photograph i had grabbed my husband's camera a sony 6000 i don't know much i'm not very good at all that mm. so uh, because i felt that i would be and it was obviously an auto so there's not much i did but i just loved this picture i've got a couple of them but this is the most favorite one there is nothing wrong with using the technology and using auto particularly while you're learning and some people never come off it and there's no real reason why you absolutely have to technology is really cool these days it does a good job we should let it do it when you want to do something in in particular and you want to do something special that's when you can come off auto and and learn those techniques but yeah i quite like the image it's really cool and i think i might have mentioned it in one of the workshops we call those people barry yeah and the reason we call them barry is a whole lot of people lined up to take a photo of a particular thing and this guy just wanders in and he and his wife yells out and I'm going to use some french here for fuck's sake barry so from then on every person who wanders into your photo is called barry <laughs> no, the the here, thing here was nobody was taking any photographs it was just the crowded it's a very old market it's from the medieval time so it's yeah. all very disorganized and all so it was just chock full of people So, but that's what makes them excellent. Was, yes, exactly. <laughs> Catching it at that moment it was really difficult. But yep. anyway, he's famous now. Everybody's seen him. Whoever yep. he is. <laughs> yeah. In in Australia, we have no markets that are anything like the kinds of bazaars that you you find in the older countries. They just yeah. we we have very pale things by comparison. So, actually, before we go on to um, Guru, does anybody have any questions for Nita? I'll just flick. Should flick back to her image. And there's uh, comments in the chat. Beauty in the chaos from Ria. The shop is very aesthetic. Yeah, so you've done a good job of taming the chaos there, Nita. Uh, Devanch says he likes the depth. Falguni says it looks great. Rosie says beautiful. Isha looks amazing, visually amazing. Uh, lighting with exclamation marks. A fairy place, says Julia. Yeah, cool. <laughs> kind of like a fairy palace. Okay, off we go to the next person, which is Guru Krishna Priya. And you learnt to concentrate and focus on the object. It's particularly good in food photography. So I th think Guru is here. Pretty sure. Pretty sure she was chatting before. She's here. She's here. Yep. Great. So let's yes. go on to your image. Yes. So in, in this one, my three words were experiment, color, and learning. And I think it was really cool that you're you're taking the time to play around and look what the different lights can do. And particularly when you compare them like this. And you can really see the difference because you put them side by side and you help us to see the difference as well. So do you want to talk about your image a little bit? Um, yes, I took this picture in three different lights. It's a fridge door. And uh, actually, uh, I couldn't get the exact color what it is. In the three different lights, it's looking in three different colors. But for me, the fridge uh, door color is little pink. I don't know. I didn't get the light exact light in the camera. Might be I should have ad adjusted something. I don't. Uh, even in the daylight, it's looking different. The the human eye sees color very different to our technology. Okay. Di very different ways, and it, it is actually hard to reproduce exactly what we see, and people struggle over that all the time. That's where techniques like um, HDR come from. So 
when you're starting to use those techniques, the, the idea of those is to make a really natural picture that has all of the colours that you remember in the scene. The trouble is we all see the colours differently and we yes. all remember them differently too because we're humans, we're weird creatures. Okay. And uh, like I actually, as uh, Rosie ma'am told, today is Guru Purnima. That means Thanksgiving Day to all the teachers. So this happened, uh, This the end of the series is on a Guru Purnima Day. And uh, thanks a lot, Paul, for teaching us so much. And everyone others. No, you're absolutely welcome. And I, one thing I've noticed, I've, I've worked with Indians for a really long time. Um, since yes. I think about 2004 started working with quite a few Indians. Um, I've even been to Chennai for a little while. I came to visit Infosys. You probably don't, probably know who they are. Um, you guys have a day for everything. Yes. <laughs> There's so many days. Every, every time you, you talk to one of the work teams, and oh, that person's off because it's this holiday, or that no, that person's off this week because it's this holiday, so you'll have to talk to this person. <laughs> it's, always, it's always funny. Yeah. So in the chat, you've got um, people saying all lighting giving a different look to that door. It's a pretty nice fridge door, I have to admit. They're usually very plain and boring, but that one's cool. Uh, and Yulia says she remembers it from the task album that various lighting on the same thing gives an interesting tint on the image. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, Devanch talking about experimenting with the lights. And similar with Nita. Looks different Paul, with the different lights. here I have a question, Paul, for yeah, you. Uh, Paul, whenever we click uh, photos of dresses, uh, uh, two days back I was trying my sister from Canada, needed some of my dresses design. We don't get exact color. Uh, how to click photos for dresses to get same color, especially when we take of blue, ferozy colors and light colors the color changes when we take from camera also so yes, what does. techniques uh, yeah what techniques we should use to get the same color you'll never get the same but the best thing that you can do is use natural soft light and that will help you um, and earlier in the day don't try and do it in the middle of the day so early in the day or later in the day and you'll, you'll get the best colors um, what you can do then is try and adjust it when you edit it and try and adjust it to look the same as what it does side by side with the piece of clothing. But just remember what we talked about earlier in the session that every single display device that people are using to look at a picture is quite different. So the display in this phone, for example, does a fairly nice job of color rendition, but it's far from perfect. I can tell it's not because I've got a calibrated monitor and when I put it next to it, it looks kind of sad. So most people will have um, consumer equipment that do their best to show color well, but they don't always. And th there's one feature of modern devices that can actually make it worse. And modern devices in recent times tend to cut down blue light and emphasize red light in their backlighting. And that actually changes the color of images a lot. So Percy, what, uh, what uh, camera are you using for the fabric? Rosie? Look at these cool questions you've uh, brought into place, Guru. DSL camera I was using. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. If the camera is um, um, sophisticated enough, um, I, Paul is right. Uh, it's very hard to get perfect color of what you see uh, to the output device because there are so many links um, uh, from the camera shooting uh, right to the final display device. So th at each point, um, something will change. So Paul is right there. But if you have um, a, a reasonable camera, there is a feature called custom white balance. So yep. custom white balance is... Um, um, first of all, you, you, you want to, okay, the, even before that, the first thing to do is try and get a light which is not artificial, not fluorescent, not LED, but uh, daylight as what Paul says. And try and, and get a light which is uniform and not very bright, uh, very dark, it's uniform. And when you put the fabric or the, the thing uh, to take the photo, 
try not to have the fabric surrounded by um, uh, a green roof or, or a, a yellow wall or something. Because if you have a yellow wall or green roof, the color of the roof and the color of the, of the wall will also impact your fabric. So uh, put your fabric uh, in uh, a place where there is a, a clean daylight, what we call clean, and it's uniform. The second thing is um, um, the camera will auto white balance everything. So if you put uh, a fabric which is very blue, there's lots of blue in the fabric, the camera will look at the subject and say, I don't think this should be blue. I think this should be more gray. So it will automatically take the photo balance towards gray. So what you do is uh, you need a custom white balance, which means that you try and take a, a clean neutral gray card uh, or, a, or, a, or a white paper. And uh, when you point the camera at the white paper, in the same position as the fabric and do a custom white balance. Um, if you read your, your manual or you, you look in the web, um, you point the camera at the, at the white paper, you hold down the button or whatever, and it will then teach the camera that the paper is white. So once you teach the camera that the paper is white, you then take away the paper, put the fabric in, and when you take the actual shot, the shot will be as blue as what you want it to be. So that is one link in the chain. But there are other links in the chain that you have to, to worry about. But that will be the first link in the chain. Is that right, yep. Paul? Yeah, definitely. And the, the other thing that can help, um, I know Guru's still on, so you can see her background. She's got a blue wall there. And if you can see Rhea and Shreya, they've both got um, red walls. And some of the other people have got a, a more um, more beigey cream sort of walls. Uh, if yeah. you take your shots near one of those kinds of walls, you'll probably get a better result with the colours. Because if you're close to something else with bright colours, that will influence the camera. So the light that it's seeing will influence what you're seeing. Thank you so much. I have white walls. <laughs> and Guru Piriya has shown this picture of uh, fridge na? this I think it is Samson they come in purple pinkish color fridge yes. of all yeah. <laughs> I remember I've seen uh, this design of fridge thank you so much Paul and your shot prompted an awesome discussion Guru so thank you <laughs> <laughs> well done <laughs> okay we'll move on to the next person and thank you for the tips and ender that's alright thank you and Neil, so his feedback was simplicity and style of explaining. Um, it, it's very difficult to balance explaining versus mansplaining and trying to <laughs> tell people things that they already know. <laughs> I usually watch that. See, some of you I can see because you keep your cameras on, which is really, really cool. And I watch people. And when they start to look a bit disinterested, I go, no, I've got to reel this in a little bit. <laughs> cool. So... And Nil is here, I think. I think he is anyway. No, maybe he, actually he's not anymore. He was earlier. He's not now. Okay. Um, and Neil, I, when I looked at this image, I thought about straight and city and nature. And so he, he's done this shooting to the T on the image to try and keep everything nice and straight. And he's done a really good job of that. He's also managed a nice juxtaposition of the plants versus the man-made objects and the way that you sort of get led into the building through the image. So I quite like it. And since he's not here to chat about his image, we'll um, move on to the next person. Also just being bearing in mind what the time is. So we've got Sayori, and I hope I've said your name right. The best I have learnt is the usage of best photo editing app for both mobile and PC. They change all the time, so um, keep playing with them. There's lots out there. So we're ready to look at your image. And did I get your name right? Yes, Paul. Yay. Okay. So when I looked at your image, the three things I thought about were freedom and speed 
and level. And it's you've kind of captured this image as the perception of being another bird following the first two, which I really, really like. And it's just a, a cool image that captures a nice moment of nature. Yeah, actually, the smaller bird was a baby seagull. Cool. This pic was taken in Chilka Lake, Odisha. Many people actually don't know about this place, but it's really a beautiful and a mesmerizing place for all nature lovers. And this pic I have taken in my mobile. So the focus, I think, is not up to the mark. And I have edited this pic using Snapseed. Cool. I think the focus is actually pretty good, especially for a phone photo. So well done. Oh, thank you. Yep. And the most important thing about any image is the composition. And I think you've, you've quite nailed this because it really feels like that you're another bird flying along in this image. Yeah. So in the chat, Nita says it's beautiful. Falguni asks which phone you've used. I have used Nokia 6. Cool. And Yulia says the moment is great and the horizon's a little bit tilted. It is just a little tiny bit. Um, when you're trying to capture things that are moving, that can be really hard to, to get that right. Yes. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> and Falguni says perfect timing. Alpha says amazing. And Devanch, it captures the moment. Isha, nicely captured, perfect timing. And shit, he knows about the place. He also says it's a nesting ground for turtles. And Jess says, yes, wow. Turtles are also there. There are also yeah. many varieties of birds. There is actually a bird sanctuary. Oh, cool. It's really good. So we'll see more shots from, of birds from you there, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You can uh, go to my local guide connect, and there I have also uploaded many pics. Oh, cool. Excellent. I'll have to start having a look. One of the, the challenges of Connect uh, is actually seeing people's content because it tends to only surface it if you're there. So if you, uh, everybody wish to see a video on this, I have up, uploaded in the YouTube. I am just sending the link. Then you can go and watch it. You will cool. really like it. Excellent. You can post a um, video picture onto Connect if you want. You need to use it in desktop mode if you're using a phone, and then you'll get a, a little camera, video camera icon, and you can put in an Earl to a YouTube video, and it embeds into your post. Okay. I have to try it. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Cool. There's lots and lots and lots of other comments on this one too. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Excellent. Thank you, Sayori. And on to the next one. Ananda, who is too shy to put in a selfie. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't and, have it. <laughs> yeah. And he was learning about local guides mapping topics because there's really nothing in photography I can teach him. <laughs> oh, no. You always learn from each. And the, the, the reason why we go on photo walks uh, is that the world is full of diverse people and each person brings their own talent and their own skill uh, to the to the meetup and you learn so much by looking at someone else the way he shoots um, and uh, my my note to Jesse is I've taken more photos of Paul's behind than he knows <laughs> <laughs> he has, he stalks me. <laughs> I look at Paul shoot, I look at what he's looking at, um, and I look at how he stands, and sometimes it's uh, interesting for the group how he stands, so I take photos of Paul. And, and sometimes I'm lying on the ground, and sometimes <laughs> I've, I've climbed up something. <laughs> the, the one thing I don't do is what, do what another friend of ours who comes on the walks does, and he always falls in the water. Yes. If there's water, he'll fall in it. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting um, thing that you mentioned about the, the photo walks, Ananda, because one of the, the really interesting things when you go on a walk and maybe you're out for a couple of hours together and then later on you start to see the images come up on socials and you know that person was standing right next to you, but their image is completely different. 
mm. because they, they've got a slight different angle, they've seen a different thing, they've highlighted a different thing in their image, they've focused on something different. And you often look at things and go, why didn't I think to do that? Mm. And that's where you get to an ender's point that if you're going to take one photo, why stop at one? Take 50. <laughs> cool. And on to an ender's image. So the words I thought of for this one were perspective, focus, and story. And I do wonder what kind of website you're on in the background there. <laughs> what? Oh, that one? Uh, oh, on the left, you mean? That's um, Spotify. <laughs> That's cool. a music website. Um, yeah, this is uh, uh, interesting and uh, those who are experimenting, you, you can't learn anything if you don't experiment. Uh, you can't learn anything if you think that uh, what you shoot is, is uh, not going to be good enough. You've got to shoot and keep on shooting until um, a good one comes. And because it's digital, what you don't like, decide to throw them away but don't throw the throw what you don't like away immediately uh keep whatever you should uh for a day for two days then look again and you may find that there's something you like uh and and you change your mind um so this one is um a, a, a toy uh that i got uh, uh from the toy walk paul yeah yeah from the toy walk um, uh, I was given a prize and Paul helped me make my masterpiece to to win the prize and so this is the prize he's called uh, he's from a, a guy called crazy customs and he takes uh, a Lego uh, standard Lego people and then he makes this custom head uh, so he's from US and he has friends in uh, in Australia and uh, they he gives these as unique um pieces to people so i got this as a prize and then on another uh uh discussion uh, somebody was talking about bewilderment or being lost or or something like that and i thought could i use this so he's a this 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 guy is a very small guy and we had been discussing in the group about macros and using macro lens and stuff like that and I didn't feel like using a macro lens. Paul has a, a nice macro lens, the 60. Um, I don't have his lens. And I had bought something else, a uh, uh, cheaper one. But I said, no, what can I do this time? And so I have what we call a fish eye lens. And a fish eye lens uh, is a lens that curves everything. You can see in the background, the screens are not uh, straight, they're curved. And when the first time somebody shows you a fisheye photo, you say, ooh, it's ugly. It's all curved. My, my life should be straight. Uh, <laughs> but after you look at it for a while, you say, hey, uh, a curve is interesting. So it curves the background easily. And then this guy is so small, you have to get very near him. And this lens by accident or I, I knew but I didn't use the ability and I got to um, Paul it would be once here maybe the the some young fish you've got one yep. haven't you? yeah yeah they focus really close yeah so it's not a macro lens it's not designed to take macro shots um, but it can focus to to uh, one cm or but so it's almost touching him and yep. when you have a wide angle 180 degrees I think this one is yeah, they yeah, are. 80 degrees. And you put it so close to, this, to, the, to the object, then everything becomes immersive. It looks like you're looking through a bubble. So, yeah, that's, that's the, the explanation behind this, this guy. Yeah, they're, they're a fun lens to use. I mean, in a lot of ways, they're actually a horrible lens, but um, they, <laughs> they, they actually make some really interesting effects. So, yeah, they're cool to play with. Yeah. So go and get a fisher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, well, we'll move on to the next person. And when we finish looking at people, I'm going to show you something in my Lightroom, just that thing about take 50 shots. So next is Anshuk. And he 
loves taking photos of food and on accessibility. In this workshop series, he was able to learn how to take great photos. It was an awesome experience learning about which types of cameras and lenses, etc., which you didn't know before. And even the small tips on do's and don'ts related to Google Maps can be very handy and help me to improve my contribution. And he was thanking for being a good host. So that's really cool. And I can see he's here. I can see his smiling face popped up and he's unmuted. He's ready to go. So let's see your image. There's some comments in the chat on the uh, Fisheye and Andy you might want to read. So Anshuk put this one in and it came in, I think, this morning. And the three things I thought of for this one were colour, place and perspective. And I also thought it was a really tough place to get all of your lights lines dead horizontal because it's uh, a very difficult angle. So well done. You've come up pretty nicely. I always like a good bit of street art. This one's quite cool. You want to tell okay, us about your uh, image? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so this place is uh, uh, it is known as Amrai Ghat, and it is in uh, it is in Udaipur. So Asha is asking about where it is. So it is in Udaipur, and the best part of it is that you can see the city palace uh, from the where you, I took the, this picture. You can see the city palace, and it looks awesome. Uh, and I have shared a link of the Google Maps. So if anybody wants to see what it, what the place is about, they can look to it. And the board, the wall, street art is of uh, Lord Shiva. Means uh, he's one of the gods in our religion and in our, in our country as well. And I don't think so. I should say anything. But yeah, I love this picture a lot. <laughs> and I thought I should post it. And I actually asked Falguni that. Is it okay that I sh uh, I post this one? And she said, yes, you should post this one. <laughs> so I yeah, did. it's cool. Why not? No, it's a cool image. So it's lots of really interesting things going on in that in the portrait of Shiva. It's cool. Thank so has so anybody much. got any uh, questions about this image? No? Hello. I'm in here. Hello, Anil. Yeah. You came in. Oh, yeah. We did your image yeah. a while ago. I had to talk about it. Oh, I was in a different webinar, Konkal. I was taking the session for conflict management. Ah. And that was a Rotary International Club. That's a good thing to do. Uh, if, this photograph, I'd like to ask Anshuk, uh, this uh, face is... It wasn't actually that long ago yours. There's yours. You want to talk about your image? Oh yes, oh yes. This is a, a lockdown period. There, this building is always used to be dry. During lockdown, there are so many flower trees. It's looking very nice. So it's catch my impression. So I cannot forget this picture. So yeah, it's kind of cool. So I talked about the juxtaposition of the the flowering flowering plants versus the man-made building as well, and how it takes your eye up into the building. So it's cool. So I thought that I should take the bait from the piece has been flower based, flower plant and accordingly I've taken, tried to take the inclination not as perfect as you taught us, but still I tried. It's pretty good. Um, for, for a tall building, that's pretty good. I wouldn't be worried about that. That's nice and straight. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Cool. And we'll pop back to Anshuk's because I think you had a question about his, didn't you? Yes. About asking about face is a three dimensional, it is a flat paper kind of thing. Uh, what's what Anil sir? I repeat, this yeah. face of Shankarji is in three dimensional or it is a flat image? Or it is it is a flat image, it's a wall street art actually. There are many street arts over there. And one, it is of Mirabai uh, with Krishna Ji. If you know what uh, you know about them, definitely. It's wonderful. It's giving an impression of 3D image. Yeah, it does gives, and you can see there's written Nilkan. You know what the Nilkan means no, in Hindi? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the best part is uh, for everyone. If you go to Udaipur in uh, in future, if you visit uh, Udaipur. Do visit Amrai Ghat. I have mentioned the link, uh, and you can see that uh, in the evening you 
there are more foreigners than indians that uh, that's how people love this possible? place yes yes <laughs> especially uh, especially there's a lot of indians during... <laughs> okay yeah there yeah. there are too many <laughs> no foreigners i don't think it's too many but there's a lot <laughs> No, no. The reason is uh, they are attracted to these pictures and they click the pictures. Foreigners, yeah. whoever comes now, when they see the street pictures, they get attracted and they try to click it. Thank you. And it's a it's it's old Udaipur, so there are lots of palaces and uh, uh, lakes and all the kind of stuff that foreigners do like it, and and which Indians get bored easily. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay anyone have any questions no, but you can ask very, yes any it's a wonderful image. really thank you very much for so sharing with all of us thank you very much oh, thank you so much really thank you, thank you. Thank it you sounds so like much. you're on a train anew <laughs> okay moving on to our next person guess who Stuart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and you might notice Stuart's fortuitously wearing the same shirt. <laughs> <laughs> same background too. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go on to Stuart's image, and I really like this one. I got worried that it wasn't going to draw it for a moment then, but uh, we we saw this one. I think was in the maybe the first or the second week. I think was uh, one of Stuart's task contributions. And the, the things that come to me with this one are movement, motion, and a journey into the ocean. So you talked about a little bit in that particular episode, Stuart, but um, I, I really enjoy this composition. It's really a stunning one. And it's a perfect example of thirds, but it's also a perfect example of what you can do in the art of photography and the lengths you go to, to the point where your camera probably got wet, I seem to remember. So would you like to talk about your image? <laughs> yeah, the camera did get wet. Yeah, it was a, it was the Sony mirrorless camera. Um, okay, fun fact number one about this photograph is that it's celebrating its first birthday tomorrow. I think it was the sixth or the seventh of July. It was taken last year in Greece. Happy birthday! Yeah, <laughs> the photo is just saying thanks. Um, yeah, it was down in the southwest of Greece, Peloponnese, pretty. Um, distant area, a, a long way from anywhere, really. We were spending the, the week or, in fact, 10 days down there. Deserted beaches, um, turtle, uh, turtle nests everywhere. And it was a red hot day. Uh, I was with the family and I think mid-afternoon they were all crashed out under the umbrellas in the tents and stuff, trying to cool off. And I wandered down the beach uh, on my own. I'd, I'd taken all of the classic beach photographs you know the deserted beach stretching away into the distance and the horizon the pebbles i had done all of that taking the pictures of the kids in the water and i just wanted something a bit different and the the dominant color obviously was was blue 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 sky and the water was very very clear and i noticed that you could see the pebbles as well so I got down on my stomach and I put on a very fast shutter speed because I didn't want any, any movement. I thought the, the waves would, would tell the story of the movement anyway. A fast shutter speed, I think it was continuous shooting. So when I held the, bu the button down, it would take two or three, probably three pictures per second or something. And it was pure chance because you can't predict what a wave's gonna do or what it's gonna look like. They went really high waves, so I had to get really low but I had to take a lot of pictures and I didn't choose the one, that one particularly until uh, obviously a couple of weeks later when I downloaded them into my, into my computer. Um, the composition was already there. I was aware of the third thing and I was aware that I would get three different colors or two shades of blue and then the pebbles. Um, yeah, and then I had to pull it into um, Photoshop or something, Lightroom actually, and uh, just pull in a little bit of blue. It was missing a little bit of colour, so I had to deepen the blue colour. But yeah, it came, it came out really well. I was, I was quite pleased with that one. I got a few good ones that day. The kids as well, um, on the beach with the pebbles and stuff, but this, this was a good one. I liked it. Jason's saying the angle is fantastic with gradual colour changes. 
Uh, he also said, Anshuk says that you stole the show. Uh, Yulia has says one of your favourite picks from the albums. And tried to catch a, a wave recently, inspired by this photo. Oh, good! Very <laughs> beautiful. That's cool that she was having a crack at that. Um, Oliver and you for the first prize. There you go. They like you. <laughs> Inspiring wow. well, shot. I think, I think I'd like to echo what uh, Ananda was saying earlier on. That this is a classic example of take as many pictures as you can because it's certainly random to, to, to a large extent. And um, as I say, it's unpredictable. And uh, it's out of your hands to a certain extent. You can follow the rules, composition, obviously lighting and things like that, but it's nature, nature's, nature's doing the, the work. And uh, take a lot of pictures. Don't be scared. Delete them. Obviously, you can't have 150 pictures of, of, of a wave on your hard disk for years. <laughs> you can. Not if you've got my Take lots and lots of pictures. Um, that's definitely what we can learn here. Take as yep. many as you can. You can yeah, delete definitely. them. It's free these days. It's free. It's not like the old days where you have to buy rolls and rolls of expensive film. Just, just keep shooting, and you'll get loads of bad ones, but it doesn't matter. Yep, doesn't absolutely. Matter. Definitely agree with that. And the, second, the second fun fact, which is not actually related to the photo, but it is related to the event, is that a couple of days after I, I fell over and broke my foot in two places, Ooh. and that was kind of the end of the holiday for me and the end of my photography as well because I spent the last couple of days just in, just in a bed. I had no crutches, and my wife had to race around the local town trying to locate some crutches for me, which was a difficult task. So I couldn't go anywhere. I had to basically go to the bathroom to crawl along the floor in this house where we were staying. You needed some Lego. So... <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty deserted where we were. There was no, no Lego, nothing like that. Yep. Nothing worse than staring yeah. at the roof and nothing to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, it came out well. It, I, I didn't think at the time it was the best picture of, of the holiday. I, I did get some good pictures, I, I thought, of that, uh, that holiday. Some wild cats roaming around the garden and the kids playing and stuff. So I, I was quite pleased with the holiday as a photography project. I tried to be yeah. as experimental as possible. Yeah. Very difficult in the hot weather, though, to be inspired to actually move and concentrate. It was ridiculously hot in Greece. The last yeah, time. it certainly can be. Um. Jessie said, looking at the three stripes, it reminds her of the flag of Estonia. Mm -hmm. uh, Kafui says, beautiful. Falguni really loved the blue shades and the pebbles make it interesting. Uh, so Sayori says, wonderful. Nita, Mrs. Going to Goa. <laughs> I can understand that. Uh, Guru loves the colour of the ocean and the wonderful blues. Sublime from Rhea. Wow from Isha. Uh, Devanch is reminded he can't go swimming. Oh, well. Uh, what have we got? Uh, Chanat asks if your camera got broken because of the water. No, it got a few splashes. I, 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 I had a couple of seconds between waves and I either jumped up or lifted my camera as, as high as possible so it didn't get full on splashed. But it got plenty of splashes. But you know, I'm not, I'm not too particular about things. I just wiped it off on my T-shirt, made sure that the, there were no droplets on the lens for the next picture and started again. Yep. I got wetter than the camera, but I didn't mind. It was 40 yeah, degrees. Hot day. Um, if, if you do get your camera wet with seawater, and this sounds weird, but you really need to flush it away with fresh water. So if it's just a few drops on the outside, don't worry about it. Just wipe it off. But if it actually gets into it, um, the best thing you can do for it is pull the battery out and flush it out with, with plain water. That sounds like a really crazy thing to do, mm -hmm. but it's already wet. It's already damaged, and you might save it from the salt, but you might not. It Pull the battery out. It wasn't dripping droplets on the, on the lens, so it wasn't definitely not that bad. Cool. It was worth it. It was to get that shot. Um, that one's probably a competition winner if you put it in, I reckon. It's the kind of shot judges love. I was, I was surprised. I'm not trying to be modest or anything, but when, when you what, your enthusiasm was, was palpable on the second session, I was surprised because I really only put it in that album because it, it fitted the thirds. I, I went through all my photographs and thought, I've got loads of pictures that work on thirds, but none of them quite fitted with exactly what you were looking for, and that one yeah. did. And, um, yeah, it's... 
obviously it's going back to the thing where it's subjective. Rhea point says um, that she did actually kill hers when she tried that. <laughs> um, if you, for the people that want to play with water photography, uh, go and get yourself a cheap action camera like a hero. So if you get one of the old Hero 3 or Hero 4, you can probably get it from just about nothing. And they're waterproof. So they're, they're awesome for playing with this sort of photography because you can't hurt it. Cool. Well, Stuart was our last person for the evening. Cool. Well, that brings us to the end of that. And I just see Shreya's face light up because she wants to do something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess now we have Hi. our time, Faluni. Faluni. <laughs> My excitement is coming and giving out the wrong name. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Let me do this. Okay, Paul, so here is a small surprise on behalf of us for you. I hope you'll like it. It's working for me. Is it working for you guys? Yep. Hey, Paul, it's Max from Melbourne, Australia, and I've had so much fun uh, with your video courses during COVID and even leading some of them myself. Um, it's uh, so great that you, you so great to connect with all the community, uh, with all the other local guides, and uh, thanks. Thank you so much. Hello, Paul. My name is Raju. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful 10 session. I really love to many things on photography and i upgrade myself thank you so much for wonderful 10 session and thank you thank you so much for vananda and for for all the great meetups and all the fun we had together from the bottom of my heart thank you so much paul love you from india <laughs>
I try to take photos and post it on my Instagram. Once again, thank you and stay blessed, Paul. Hi, Paul. The, this is the tenth session of our photography workshop. It's really very exciting journey with you for the last ten weeks, and I cannot thank you enough for how much skills you have taught me in this whole session. Uh, today is Guru Purnima. Uh, as we say that uh, Guru Purnima is like thanking your guru who teaches you, like a teacher. We thank our gurus, and this is such a great opportunity that today is Guru Purnima, and this is our last session. Uh, I don't want this session to end because I learned a lot from your session, and I hope you start a new one soon. I want to share some good photos that I clicked within this series. Uh, in your form, you just mentioned to select only one, and it was very difficult to select one photo. So I just want you to see those photos and give some comments, but because your comments are like literally a remark to improve our skills. Thank you. Thanks for this amazing journey. I think we'll all miss this 10 weeks workshop henceforth. Uh, we have learned very good tips and tricks, uh, and going forward, we'll definitely try this. Thank you. Thank you all. That's really cool. Wait, Paul. This is not the last. You have seen all the picture. Now see the live. Max was here and he disappeared. He's back. Hey, Paul. He's back. Hi, hey, it's Paul. Hey, no, it's Paul. What are you talking? About? <laughs> I'm Paul. Love you, Paul. Hi, <laughs> I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and I've got news. I just brought this cool turtleneck. Check it out. Oh, my God. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So now you're a turtle. Bring <laughs> me. <laughs> We you say you're a virus, and today you're a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do it. So so now. Get this light right here. Look at this turtleneck. Look at the look at the light. Crazy. For some reason, we've got subtitles turned on now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so what is Google? What is Google? Oh, sorry. One sec, I got a VIP. Got a VIP. Shipper, look, it's fun people. Hello. 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 I wanted to ask you, what is Google Local Guides? It's our big family, Max. <laughs> Max, good you came back. Everyone was missing you. And this was a big <laughs> highlight you came. Everyone was missing you too much. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> I, I, I did stalk Max quite a bit with um, different phone numbers and in Telegram. And <laughs> This session would have been incomplete without watching, you. I was watching Netflix with my family. I forgot. I just forgot. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh. And I checked my phone because it was on silent. And I was like, oh, Paul's thing. The Google <laughs> Mobile Guide thing. I forgot about that. That's all right. But you like to have a family. I went to, um, I went to a restaurant today. Um, a Movida. A Movida. Yeah. It was so yummy. <laughs> Did you go to the big Movida or a Movida next door? I went to the big Movita and I posted uh, I po after I after I went I posted some of my my photos on Google on Google Maps. I posted a review. He's dying to show us. You can tell, can't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> Where is it? No, oh, yes. No, no, let me. I posted a review. Just while he's faffing around, Anil, you wanted to say something? I noticed you've turned your camera on for what I think is the first time ever. Okay. Yes. Oh. Yes. Hello. Hey, Paul. I won't take more than 30 seconds. <laughs> you have seen all those things in videos, nice pictures, 
nice people with nice expression so i thought i should have something different than others so i'm giving you live okay cool. oh okay. live that's good okay i'll close this so you know thank core of my heart though the learning has not yet been fully implemented however i promise you i will try to emerge from the next level whatever i am today Excellent. thank you very much for all the learning which you have transferred thanks for the transformation thank you very much keep spreading the good habits thank you well, thank you for coming along and taking part and i'm glad you enjoyed it it's it's been really great to see you all coming back week after week after week it's been really cool well actually i missed the video i i couldn't uh, join with these people because i was not available at the time oh. it was a very impromptu thing yeah. we just literally planned last yeah. night at by 11 pm or 12 pm and falgal is like give me a video i'm like wait it's midnight i have to sleep i'll give you tomorrow morning <laughs> so we made the shot an hour before and then she's like okay give it soon i have to merge it i'm like okay <laughs> Yeah, and let me accept it. It was not make it. Video. The best part of the video was how everyone worked together and contributed to the video, uh, and it had little snapshots of everyone. Well, and we'll put the video on the internet so you can stream it on YouTube later. Yep, we can do that easily enough. <laughs> oh, Max, you look good. Yes, Max the carrot. <laughs> Thank you for going to all the effort of putting that together, Belgrini. The sound that a cow makes is like moo, but did you know that the sound of a carrot makes is coo, coo, coo? The sound of a carrot. Now I must remind you that you're the ones that wanted him back. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone except Stuart. <laughs> Now, actually, you, you, uh, you guys, we should do a one video where we get everyone, everyone who has the ability to should 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 use um put a filter on, and we could do a fun like a fun Brady Bunch video with this. Does, Does everyone know how to do a to, to do this sort of Snapchat camera style thing? You you have to restart Chrome to um. install it don't you i'm not sure but i'll put a link in the comments for how the website to download the software it's free <laughs> we can use it for today's party <laughs> <laughs> well while he's while he's putting links in there thanks for guni for putting all that together that was cool and thank thank you to the people who took uh, part in it was the last moment it was last moment so i missed out many people i was trying to get in touch with everyone but it is really difficult to find everyone Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed that you managed to get that done without me finding out about it too. That's well done. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to you. <laughs> cool. You're muted, Ewadi, if you're talking. I want to say something. Yep. Yeah. yeah, um I want to say A very big thank you to Ananda. Thank you. I yes. <laughs> he has been so so supportive. Like have never seen anyone like that. So punctual. Like he is with you from the beginning to the end of each session and he has in fact <laughs> he he has a deluge of information to share with us at every session. like i've never seen a friend like that then there was something he said i will really, oh sorry i have a friend like that falguni <laughs> so there was something <laughs> there was there was something he said one time um i think it was guru krishna mam that asked about how many lenses you take when you go out and he told us about carrying your bag for you one day and how he almost fainted after carrying the bag so since that time <laughs> every time i think of getting a lens i keep reminding myself remember what ananda said remember what ananda said so um, <laughs> so um i also want to appreciate um ananda thank you and yeah all the speakers too yeah jessie 
I learned um, something from Jesse about the human element in food photography. Every time I see food now, I'm remembering, grab it, take a bite, take a shot, and all of that. So it's been a great session. Thanks to everyone. Cool. Thank you for coming along, and thank you for appreciating Ananda. <laughs> now, Ananda's from Melbourne. Yep. Paul's from Melbourne. The sound Hannah is from Melbourne. Yep. I'm from Melbourne. So, look, I Where don't are the rest say of you? what the best city in the world is. <laughs> the best local guides are from, but I'm pretty sure it might be Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make them not like you now. <laughs> I mean, I, and, then, and also Anil's from Melbourne. Guru's from Melbourne. Iwade's from Melbourne. Falguni's from Melbourne. Like, everyone's from Melbourne. <laughs> we are soon moving to Melbourne now. Exactly. <laughs> Come on down. You've got to have Connect in Melbourne. It's the only, yeah, not America. America's stuffed. Got to come to Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, we are calling you to come to India. That's a good one as well. We should have a set another one in India. Look, all turned into an avocado. <laughs> oh, nice! I have actually been to in India, Anil. I was in Chennai in two thousand and six. Oh. India is much different now, Paul. India is much, much different now. Every year you will see something new here. They were Every building. Year. They were building amazingly quickly while I was there. I was only there for two weeks. And in, in that time in the city of Chennai, they built two railway stations. Oh, this army of people building these things, and they just appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> and now they're building metros. Where did you stay in Chennai? I stayed in the Sheraton. No, which place did you stay? Which hotel? The Sheraton Hotel. Oh, that's good. Work, work was paying, not me. I couldn't have afforded to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was one of those weird situations. So we're used to lots of people from Indian companies like Infosys and Wipro and Tata coming to work with us. But for oh. two weeks, I went and worked there. It was just, okay. just to be different. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, I should point out that, um, Iwede, I have actually learnt from carrying around all that crap. I don't carry so much anymore. I, I tend to carry one or two lenses at most on a photo walk these days, unless I've got a particular reason to have more. Okay. Well, no, I saw it one time you, you brought your, you buy your 360 camera, which is two lens, two lenses. You brought your iPhone, you bought your Google phone, which has like three lenses, like the pixel, you know, it adds up. <laughs> And you brought an avocado. And I brought an avocado. And now, Amanda brought a potato. <laughs> um, now, I put some reviews up I'm on cool. Google Maps. And if you could check them out and give them the thumbs up, because I find that not enough people are thumbs up being my reviews. So if oh. you want... Put, yeah, that's right. I'm begging for it. I'm begging for the thumbs up. people like you, Max. And put your link in there, and I will thumbs up your reviews. And boom, we got a thumbs up. Because I want to get that thumbsing up badge on Google Maps. I want to get the badge. Didn't know there was one. Yeah, if you get a million thumbs up, they give you a Google Map. Well, there you go. You sure you don't they give you an avocado? Yeah, but no pip. <laughs> I thought avocados were a Sydney thing. Uh oh, he's muted now. I'm not sure. I don't know. Avocado yeah. is anything. The um, potato thing is a, a photography term. If you see a, a photo that's uh, particularly bad, it's not that uncommon for someone to ask, did you shoot that with a potato? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I do know someone that actually made a, a potato camera, has film and a lens, <laughs> all working. You can Google it because I'm pretty sure he put a blog up about it. Cool. You look kind of like a koala, Max. Green it, koala. It does. Sometimes yeah. I, you, I, I'm searching. As soon as you mentioned potato, I was like, I've got to find a potato filter. You were yeah. looking better Mook, as a llama last time. <laughs> Mook will beat you to it. 
<laughs> hey, did you guys hear? Um, I just want to get. I want. I want to get serious for a second. Did you guys hear that? Um, you you never get serious. I just want to get really serious for a second because I appreciate everyone who's been in this so much. So Who thinks Max can get I serious? That, I know that I've. I know that I've offered it before, but I really, really want to extend another invitation to all of you for connect live 2020 you're all getting another ticket because you're all <laughs> so worth it yep now we can all go twice to the event that's not on in october yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you're all getting more tickets just check your gmail it'll it just yeah you'll get it <laughs> you're all going to connect i still think they should have done connect digital connect i still think they should have done digital connect uh, they, they, they potentially could have, but um, I don't think it would have had the magic. I've never been to Connect. I, I wonder if, if I would if I would have fun at Connect. If I would enjoy Connect. The the, the magic is um, meeting the the two hundred odd people plus at least another hundred Googlers who go to it in person, mostly for the first time. So last year, I think there were maybe maybe twenty five people that I knew, and by the end of the event. Mm -hmm. it, it's a family and everybody's just hugging and crying because they don't want to leave each other. <laughs> and and <laughs> the, the fact that... Could we pitch... That, that you can transform from just being there in one place to being a family is pretty impressive. Yes. Now, Google the, was Donald yeah. Trump potato for a while there. Oh, no, I don't want to <laughs> Could we pitch them? We had so many more Burnians, including Stuart. <laughs> So many awesome yeah. I, I have to feed Mookul. It's funny. <laughs> oh, what? That's a That's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's very good, Mookul. Oh Hi, God. Max. I learned it from you from the beginning. <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. Yeah. And I, I uh, practiced it many days. <laughs> Well, how do, I I want put the link to that 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 filter in the in the in the comments. That's a really good filter. I like that one. Yeah, in uh, workshop number six, you also shared the link, and from that link, I tried it, and I can do it easily now. And nice. I know how to use the <laughs> shortcuts also. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, so I um, it looks kind of like a peanut with weird hair. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Um, what was I going to say? Um, ah, uh -uh. <laughs> no, no, um, they've taken him. <laughs> so, um, aliens are taking you away. <laughs> we could. Um, uh, it wouldn't be the first time, and it won't be the last time. Um, He's an alien. I don't need a filter for that. I can just. <laughs> <laughs> that Netflix oh, series has gone from you. <laughs> oh, Muckle's killing it. <laughs> Of course, great. <laughs> um, my question for you is: We have so many awesome Melburnians, and I think they have a Google Maps office in Melbourne. Maybe we could pitch a mini connect in Melbourne after lockdown next year or something. You can always try. Always try. I know Crowdsource has had access to that office. Oh, there's, really? there's no one in the Melbourne office, by the way. It's empty. There's actually no one there. Oh. Jesse, Jessica, could you? Like, I'm a little bit confused about crowdsource. Can you explain a little bit about crowdsource? Sure, like, generally. Like, okay. So, oh, <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's uh, basically an app or website that you can perform small tasks in that take a couple of seconds usually and they improve Google products, but I mean, they improve uh, more specifically um, the machine learning. So they give like more examples to Google products and the products learn from the examples and that's called machine learning and artificial intelligence. So there's a lot of that. And basically Crowsos is about um, giving examples of different cultures so it understands better not only like United States and Europe, it understands better like things from South America, Australia. And it works as well everywhere, basically. 
Yeah. So That's that new that new All functionality right. you've seen in Google Photos where it's um, self tagging the images and it's working out people and working out the, what the things are. That's actually coming out of CrowdSource. But um, one 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 photo thing. My my contributions with CrowdSource aren't that high. I'm nothing like Jesse. But one thing I'm kind of proud about. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, kind of. Thirty sixth in the world for image recognition. <laughs> What thirty six? Awesome. Yeah. Well, on on the other ones, I'm like twenty thousand and something. So image I'm, I'm, a, I'm I'm a level three, so I'm I'm up there. <laughs> <laughs> like, got it. You, you, what it. you need to do a lot of work then. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I just I, I, do, do you get do you get rewards like maps or I don't know, I've already done so much maps. I think I might just continue with maps. They're, they're actually a little bit better at it than um, maps, to be honest. What bit, bit better at what? <laughs> rewards. <laughs> what are rewards they, they get? Because crowdsource have local events that you can get to go to. So I know Jesse's been to a bunch of those, and some of the oh, other no. people here have probably been to local ones as well. So there's not just mm -hmm. got the global ones, which um, Jesse was going to the global one, and then it got cancelled. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it got cancelled the day I was leaving. <laughs> which was interesting. Yeah. Jesse was going to be flying fr through Melbourne, so we were organising to meet at the airport at something like five o'clock in the morning and spend about three <laughs> hours together and then get her back into the airport. <laughs> yeah, crazy, but... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Worth doing, though. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, but definitely, if you like um, the local guide stuff, have a play with Crowdsource. A lot of the activities oh. are actually fun. And you, it doesn't take as long as you would think. I got level nine oh, and level ten on the same day because <clears throat> I just spent the whole day on the couch doing that and nothing else. Beast mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it's um ten thirty here, which means for Ollie it's uh, twelve thirty in the morning now. <laughs> it's the next day. Ollie's even more in the future than we are. I'm not sure if he's still here. Actually, I think he might have dropped off. Yeah, I think he has. But, I'm going to uh, play you all a song for because it's 10.30. I'm going to play you all a song. Just don't play one that gets me kicked off YouTube. I do do ba ba da ba pineapple DJ song. This is the way you got to play song. Open source crowd pineapple DJ song. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, Max, you just covered across the whole world you made everybody face palm at the same time. Oh! <laughs> pineapple DJ. <DJs. laughs> Only way we play with a pineapple DJ. Yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, I'm sad to say, but I think our 10 weeks has probably come to an end. And it's uh, definitely going to miss you guys and miss doing this. And tonight, yeah. Max is going to come as nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really afraid. <laughs> Eating us out. <laughs> we are enjoying oh. him. <laughs> good, <he came. laughs> Too good, too good, Max. <laughs> we'll see everybody on Connect. And uh, I will turn up in people's virtual meetups when they're in time zones that match up well enough with mine. Sweet. So will Max. <laughs> I'll be there. Thank you so much. Cool. Well, it's been awesome sharing the last 10 weeks with you. Call my name and I'll be there. And thank you for the video surprise, Falguni, and all the people that took part in that. That was awesome. Yes, thanks, Falguni. That was that was awesome. You guys all happy if I include that in the, uh... And thank you, everyone, yep. who joined it and made it more warmer for it. Oh, can you put a link to the video in the chat? Is it just, is, did you make a video of it, or you just played them in sequence? No, no, no. I've made a video. I'll, I'll, I've shared it already. I'll share it's it once again. Uh, it's in the week nine album. Uh, you I can get, in the week nine album, next. maybe. We have a separate album where all the individual videos are also available. I'll share that link. Can you share the uh, uh, link to the Max? Uh, or maybe I already sent Max, I already sent a link on Instagram. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Cool. You know what? Yeah. All right. Well, it's time for us to do local guides thing. Yeah. So this time. We all ready? Everybody unmute? Yes. We're all going to say local guides. Oh, okay. On the count of one. It It'll be on the count of three. Lots of people are unmuting now. Local guide. I think we should say something like local guides put the best photos on maps. Yes. yes. So local guides yes. put the best photos on that on the count of three. Max is going to shut yes. the door so we don't wake up his baby. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. One. Yes. Two. Local guides. Local guides. Thank see you. you all on Hi, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank 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 you. Paul. God bless you. Bye, Max. Thank, Thank you. you. Same to all of you. Bye, everybody. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. In Indian language, Ananda means very happy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, as they say in the classics, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye everyone. Good night. Good night, Paul. Thanks. See you later. Bye, Paul. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Would miss you all a lot, especially Max. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure we can get Max into some other local guides meetups. <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll try and get him to do one about food because he loves doing that. Yeah, food photography, totally his forte. Let's have something like that. Yeah. After some time, you have your family time, sure. And after that. <laughs> cool. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Paul. For Thank you. Thanks a lot. Great job. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye, Paul. Bye, Paul. Next time might be a while, mate. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>